public part. Here we go. Okay, so I guess we don't have any um, attendees, but for the video, welcome to the September Affordable Housing Trust meeting. Um, let's uh, let's let's begin. Um, first item on our agenda is let me get that open. It's reviewing August minutes, I think. Oh, Grover made it. Hey, yay, Grover. Okay. Hey there. Great. Thanks for joining. In, uh, all right. So uh, we um, we have a quorum and we are ready to to launch into the first item. Um, I think Greg shared that Nate won't be joining us this evening, um, but let's dive in. Yeah, so I think our first item is just approving minutes from August. Anyone have any additions, modifications? Erica, please. Thank you. Um, so just the section in item two, where we're discussing um, provision with regard to Valley CDC, not coming back to ask for additional funding. I think in one place it said the town and in the, um, in the uh, recommendation or the vote, but we didn't say specifically the trust. I would just clarify that we were talking about the trust, not the town, and be very specific that our vote said trust. Um, yeah, very good point. And I have one more. <laughs> um, item number four under action plan number two funding is just at the end of the sentence starting with funding uh there is trust comma n i think that just needs the comma and the n just need to be removed that's it Okay, do we have a, a motion to uh, approve the minutes as amended orally? I move to approve the minutes. Okay. Um, I second. Second. Um, all, all in favor? We can, I guess, yeah, we're, we're all, all in favor. Let's um, move on then to the next item on our agenda, um, which is discussing, sorry, I've got the wrong, Agenda in front of me. The CPA uh, application and how we wanted to handle that this year. So we need to put in the application by the end of the month. And there are, I think, at least two issues that, the, that, that we should think about and have a meeting of the minds about. One is the amount to request. And Greg can share a little bit about the pattern of requests and grants over the past couple of years. And then the second is whether we wanna be explicit or how we wanna address the strategy item that we felt as a group, we wanted to try to have a consistent um, amount granted, even though that hasn't been past practice. Um, and so the question is, what do we wanna say about that in particular? And, but I guess starting with the amounts requested and the amounts granted, Greg, could you share what you saw when you reviewed the pattern? Sure, so I can, and I just made a, a real quick uh, tabulation after getting some information today. Um, but the pattern is roughly, um, we've, been at, we've, we've been receiving about half of what we've asked. Um, and let me zoom here, um, pardon my, fairly unimpressive formatting here. Um, Can you make it bigger? Yep. Please. How's that? Right. Thank you. All right. Um, and so, oh, huh. I think I, oh, I lost my column here. I'm um, sorry. So um, I must've, oh, huh. I think I hit the wrong column. Um, Sorry, I hit a column which has fiscal years. So this is, uh, and I can't 
I don't know how to do this in the online version of uh, um, of Excel, but this is FY or um, weirdly there was um, no FY22 that, that I could find. Does that um, ring a bell to anyone who was here during FY22? I can't remember a year we didn't get something, but FY twenty two was the the years are like like FY twenty five has already happened, so I don't. Well, we're in it right now. That, 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 I know this what is, you mean. So yeah, twenty four is longer ago than I think it is. That's correct. Yes, <laughs> that's, yes. that's all. I I don't know. Um. So yeah. So you can see the pattern, and, and again, forgive the um the. Uh, poor formatting here, but the pattern is roughly we've been getting just about half uh, almost every, every time that I could find save last year. We got looks like a little more than half. Carolyn, 300, that, that was the final number we ended up with for FY25. I, right? I think so, yeah, I, I, okay. as I recall. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I, I recall the same thing, 300,000, okay. yes. So Yeah, so we got a little more than, than half of what we asked for this past cycle. Um, so that's kind of the so I guess the question is whether there's any reason to ask for a different amount from what we've been asking for in previous years, which has been the, the 500,000. Um, I mean, in an ideal world, um, you would ask for the amount that you get. And, and so there wouldn't be anchoring yeah. and, 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 and such, but I guess the, the history shows that um, asking for 500,000 gives us somewhere between 250 and three. Um, so I, I wonder what you all think about this, this, this question, this issue. Of course, in our narrative, we can say something about that, um, but I wonder what your thoughts are about the amount that we should be requesting. Allegra? Um, I was just wondering, is there a way to kind of figure out what like a, the automatic 15% that we're saying in our um, strategic plan what that amount would be so that we're not like, I don't know, say we're asking for 500,000 and that's actually like 30%. Um, and, and then that gets to the question, do we calibrate our strategic plan to reflect the higher number or do we ref, you know, scale back our ask, which I don't like that idea, but um, did that make sense? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I have to, I'm not sure that I want to bring up the 15% thing until we actually have finalized our strategic plan. I would be more inclined to go through this year kind of the way we have in the past, and I don't see any reason for asking less than we have asked for before. Um, we have used, with the, with the thing we just, just uh, awarded to Valley CDC for... Um, Amherst Homes, I keep trying to call it ball lane. Um, we don't, we're not, we aren't sitting on a lot of money. So uh, asking for the, making the case for the $500,000 that we usually make a case for seems to me like a good idea. When it comes to the CPA trying to figure out what to do, it's going to ask us all kinds of other things. What could, what, how much do you, then there will be some negotiating bunch of stuff that will happen, but why start from a lower place when you know there's going to be negotiating going on? Um, yeah, Erica, please. Um, I would agree with Carol. I think we should ask for 500,000 and um, I think we should wait until this cycle and uh, when we're done with our action plan and actually look at the trends of what the total amount is that the CPA has what the total amount is that they generally um, designate and provide to affordable housing, um, and then what uh, what the percentage generally is that we get from them, because they're going to look at the um, all of what they provide for in terms of the loans they have, and you know for them affordable housing is more than the trust. So I think you know once we're ready to strategic talk to them, I think we have to have all that data in place. So when they come back to us and say, "Well, you know, we provide this amount of affordable housing," um, so I, I I would agree with uh, Carol's uh, plan. 
Um, maybe Allegri, if you, just to hear from everyone first, Grover, what do you have a, a, a reaction or, or instinct on this here? Um, I agree with Allegra that I wouldn't want to under ask. Okay. They can say no. Okay. Allegra? I guess to clarify, like I want more money for the trust. So I'm trying to make sure that like the 15% that we had talked about in our strategic planning session was at least somewhat in line with where, what we are getting currently from like their general pot of money versus do we need to up that 15% to a bigger number of a percent? Um, so I don't know if that's something that Greg could like calculate for us um, or if that was a number that was based in reality that I just, <laughs> I'm not based in reality, so I don't know. Um, thank you. Greg, do you, do you have a... Yeah, so I don't I don't have the precise numbers, um, but back of the envelope, 15% um, is low, right? So, um, well, actually, I think we're probably a little bit above 15% right now, historically. I think the spirit of the 15% ask, and I think we've already kind of codified it or uh, put an asterisk there of, that doesn't preclude a further ask, but I think where we're going, and I, and I, and I would probably agree that this is not the year to kind of like propose this sort of more complex structure, but until we have all that data and, and kind of a, you know, a strong sort of consensus and how to sort of execute that plan. But I think the 15%, the advantage of that would be getting some sort of, you know, some sort of formal agreement that that's a, a reliable, you know, predictable out year sum um, but then we'd be asking, I think, every year for some chunk on top of that um, as well. Um, uh, so, you know, because the reality is, you know, certainly the overall CPA is probably around 40, I think, um, in their in their housing expenditures and their state required threshold is 10. Um, so they're not stretching to hit their affordable housing goals. Um, it's more a question of encouraging them to channel more via the trust. Uh, sorry, before going, Carol, Alex, I forgot to ask your your take on this uh, this question. Um, I agree that it makes sense to to wait until our plan is finalized um, to move forward to push for that. So I'm comfortable with okay. utilizing the same ask as last year. Carol. Yeah, I, I guess I just think. Um, Figuring out whether fifteen percent is the right percent or not is something that we should do in the in the in the creating the finalized version of the strategic plan and not and not in this thing here and and kind of I don't think we want the fifteen percent to be the top of what we'd ever ask for because we want it to be here's what we just get all the time without having to go and talk to you and yeah. make some giant point. And it doesn't preclude us being able to also say, and this year, and for this reason, we need this other money. But I really think that the place to wrestle with that is yeah. is when we're um, making, finalizing the strategic plan. I mean, I guess towards the idea of the spirit of having stability, I think that also suggests asking for the same amount. Okay. So if that... Um, if, if we're comfortable with the $500,000 request uh, once again this year, um, then I think we've been kind of talking ourselves out of um, saying very much about this point in our strategy, but let's let, just address that very specifically. Uh, sh should we um, kind of just lay a foundation for the idea that our um, strategic plan um, seeks to um, go move in the direction of a d default grant from the CPA as some other towns in the Commonwealth are doing? Or should we keep that um, uh, kind of a silent proposition in the application? Erica? 
Oh, uh, Carol, you raise your hand. Yeah, I'm talking too much. Probably. I oh, think no, it would, no, not at all. I, I, um, I just think it's better to wait until we, like when we decide we're going to do it, that doesn't have the whole question of how is the best way to approach doing it. And so okay. I would rather approach doing it when we figured out the best way, not just with some something that we haven't really thought very much about at this moment. So I would rather okay. not talk about it right now. Anyone want to kind of raise the argument of the devil's advocate here? Or we're, we're, we're comfortable with that. So then um, uh, other, other, otherwise, um, you know, we have the um, precedents from Carol and Erica's uh, and the team's submission last year. And um, so um, we'll be working from, from that foundation to prepare the application this year. Um, Greg, what other feedback do you think you need from the, the trust? Uh, Erica? Uh, sorry, Greg. I was just gonna volunteer that I could review um, before it's finalized. Um, so if you need somebody just to review it, um, I'd be willing to do that. Thank you very much. I think the broad guidelines there is, is the main thing that we needed. Thanks, Erica, also. Okay. So uh, I guess we can move on from this agenda item. I'm just curious, a question of curiosity. It's who's, Gaston, are you drafting it or Greg is drafting it or you're collaboratively drafting it or who's drafting it? We're gonna- just Curious. So I mean, I kind of had had assumed we do it collaboratively, um, uh, and kind of bounce it back and forth, and then was probably going to draft a uh, um, a reviewer, <laughs> regardless of volunteers tonight. So, uh, um, but yeah, that was kind of my thought on it. Okay, I just it seems like it's due soon enough in the context of everything that that would be a good thing for us to know is what the process of it is going to be. <clears throat> sure. I mean, I, I mean, I'd be happy to like, like, take take a first run at it and send it Gaston's way. Gaston, does that sound? That I mean, if if um, if if that works for you, I think that that would be great. And um, but let's give ourselves um, uh, let's try to get a draft to Erica. Um, and we can kind of get more drafts moving around. But by the um, maybe by the twenty first at the latest. Does that seem like a reasonable? So nine days from now, yeah? Okay. Yeah. Yep. And I was just gonna say it's on uh, the 21st is a Saturday, which is not a problem for me. I'm retired, okay. so every day is a free day for me to work. <laughs> um, but I was just gonna say, since we all got a copy, if anybody sees anything that they glaringly think should be in there, please send it to Gaston and Greg, um, because I think you know all of our collective memories for this past year is important and anything that you think is important to leverage uh, that we should get this money. And the reason I say this is because they're gonna also be very aware that we eventually are gonna get that million, one point million, uh, $1.2 million. So let's be prepared to strategize on how to respond to that. Alex? Uh, I was just going to say, Erica, if you're willing, I'd be thrilled to join you through the review process to to learn from you as you do that. Thank you. Excellent. Um, I think we we have a plan, which is that everyone's feedback um, in the next week is uh, solicited and and um, and desired, and then. Um, Greg and I will get a first draft off the ground that we'll uh, send to uh, Erica and Alex with um, copy to everyone if, if uh, so that folks can also can jump in at that point. But um, we understand that, that Erica and Alex have stepped up to um, give a review in time to incorporate their feedback um, in time for the submission. Uh, excellent. OK, so uh, the next item is that it would be um, helpful to have a vice chair in line in case, I mean, at, at some point, there'll be a reason why I can't make a meeting and just so that we have um, a process already lined up in advance. Um, and so um, we haven't 
talk to um, folks about this. So, and we concluded that it's not critical to solve this tonight, but if anybody would like to volunteer to be a vice chair, um, this is the moment to, uh, to, to, to say so, or, or, or later if, if we don't get another volunteer right now. Since it's not a critical item, I don't think we need to um, uh, spend too much time here, um, but uh, we'll see if someone is a spontaneous uh, volunteer for, for that um, vice chair role. Clarifying question for you. Yeah. Um, if someone were to put their name forward, yeah. would that involve doing what you do already monthly like review it you know like actively yeah, doing yeah. that every week or just so, stepping in I mean, if you're not available right it's really uh, it's really running the meeting um i'm i'm i the the um the kind of pre-meeting that i've now started having with greg um is something that can be scheduled the schedule can be changed on that so that's not a um that's not the kind of thing that gets thrown off by um a specific item that comes up on a thursday that can't be anticipated now. So it would really be um, just running the meeting. I okay. mean, from, to the extent that that's what, that's what the chair is doing. It's really just uh, being the, the moderator of the meeting in that form. Great, then I offer my name up. Okay. Just keep a pause open to see if uh, by any, there's any reason why someone else would want to volunteer but I um um uh given that it's now been 20 seconds I would uh, suggest um uh asking if we um uh if, if we are ready to uh elect to uh make Grover the vice chair of the the housing trust okay fabulous thank you so much for volunteering Grover this wonderful um so uh, you know, on the license commission, this has come up a few times um, where we've needed someone, uh, the, the the chair can't make it, and then the vice chair um, uh, 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 steps stepped up um, to that role. And so that's that's great. Um, awesome. Uh, so moving along, we're, we're um, really knocking out the items. Um, the next discussion is housing uh, production plan. And the the question here, maybe I'll, I'll let Greg introduce it, but it's really getting feedback from us about data and any other sort of empirical or policy guidance that we that we think would be helpful for the folks, uh, the Barrett team preparing the housing production plan to consider. So it's our chance to kind of give a wish list of, uh, won't you consider this as you're preparing the, the housing production plan? But Greg, please go. Uh, why don't you add to that? Um, yeah, Gaston, that's a, a pretty good uh, one sentence summary there, but um, just to expound a little more. Um, so the housing production plan, which I've, I've talked to you all about a lot now, <laughs> um, uh, a big chunk of that uh, is a needs assessment. Um, and, and the needs assessment involves a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of data. There's a, the sort of streamlined version is basically census data, um, you know, some sort of real estate stuff, you know, uh, but then our hope is that, you know, and we're encouraging Barrett um, as they begin to go down this component of the work to, you know, to, 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 to zoom in a little more specifically, you know, to look, you know, closer at, for example, you know, um, student dynamics are more significant, obviously, in Amherst than they would be in the average community. So we're asking them to, you know, look a little more into, you know, how student renter dynamics affect the overall um, housing need in town, just as one example perhaps the most obvious. Um, but there's other stuff too, you know, I'm particularly interested in, um, uh, you know, in looking at um, um, uh, um, homeowners, you know, homeowners that are, um, you know, you know, one or, or two member household homeowners, um, I think is an interesting data point for Amherst. Um, so I've encouraged them to explore things like that. Um, uh, you know, and, and, and in truth, we actually haven't had like a formal guidance conversation with them yet. Um, and one of our check-ins just to really, you know, give them a laundry list of, of priorities for this, um, uh, which is why we're having this conversation now. Um, so, so I guess maybe, you know, the ask of this group is, you know, are there any things you're particularly excited um, to see included 
uh, in the housing needs assessment um, that um, Barrett might be able to track down. Yeah, Grover, please. Yeah, just some, at this point, questions. I'm not seeing anything that makes me like a giant clear gap, but a curiosity about, for example, like I don't see the number of people who are living unsheltered um, versus those who are living in some kind of Craig's door or other like placement. For sure. So, yeah. The total number of homelessness and then uh, like people experiencing homelessness and then that broken out, even an estimate, I think, would be helpful. And then also. Um, and so that's one thing I see missing. And then I have some curiosities about if they could get more um, granular data. For example, I don't see on this list. Um, investor owned homes. And I imagine they might consider that included with mortgage holders, but also maybe not. So I, if possible, I would like to see investor owned homes versus uh, owner occupied owned homes. And then um, I don't see ADUs on here. That may be helpful to track at the beginning of the 10 year and at the end. And I'm curious what employed renters means versus independently wealthy renters or unemployed renters. I, I'm curious what that distinction is doing for sure. it. And, yeah. And I just want to offer a, a quick interjection to this list here is just like meant to evoke ideas. It's by no means mm -hmm. exhaustive of what they're going to cover. There's a whole bunch of other stuff that they're, that they're is already in their standard approach um uh you know certainly like point in time data from the the um homelessness census would uh would, would be included in that um right. um but and yeah and then um yeah so this is more just kind of examples of like stuff we could look at um i think i probably meant um and that's on my part probably not uh, particularly uh thoughtful like differentiating um student renters who might be utilizing um resources that aren't from employment income um, uh, versus like, um, w you know, versus working age adults who are not associated with university. But, but again, very generic, like just literally this, this data sheet was just like, you know, Gaston encouraged me to like give some examples, <laughs> you know, okay. before we do this. So, but yeah, that's great. Yeah. Uh, I didn't mean to like, dump on you personally no, 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 just no, no, like no, no, looking but... at the list i'm like this isn't what i would expect to see <laughs> um and also demographically i would be curious gender is not on there i'd be curious to see that in both of terms like aging population what we have and then also i i personally would like to know like uh same-sex gender households but trump took it off the census so i don't know how they would capture that but um that's a curiosity i would have too just in terms of you know organizing and making sure we're meeting needs like if we we do have a, a giant uh lesbian and trans population in western mass and so are we creating the senior aging facilities that are going to be welcoming for them do we have homeless services that i think we do but like that are going to be welcoming so that kind of stuff would also be helpful but i know that data is hard to get okay that's helpful thank you yeah, Erica. Um, which just thinking about what uh, Grover said, um, also single head of households, if there's one parent head of households, I think would be important too. Um, and um, I'm also interested in knowing, so, you know, it, the example is Rolling Green. I think when Rolling Green's, uh, I think agreement with the town ended and another management company took over, I remember we actually had individuals from Rolling Green come and say they had lived there I don't know how many years in affordable housing. And when it got turned over, um, the rents went so far up that they had to leave. And so I want to know what kind of properties that, you know, might start being turned over that were affordable, where the agreement is over and they become unaffordable. That's, I think, is really important. I also, um, just from the South Hadley plan, they had actually looked at all the town property that could potentially be used for affordable housing. And I think that's really important. Um, I, I would like a little bit more attention to the town. For example, 
what is the amount of time it takes for when there's a developer who is working with us around affordable housing and actually getting through the town process. So through zoning and through all of that, because I think, you know, it could indicate that we need to be working on some reduction of town barriers to getting affordable housing um, up and running. So I think that would be real important. Um, so those are just my two. Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, Carol, please. Um, all of those are great. The only one I would add, and, I, and I, I'm not sure how you would possibly get this, but one of the things I have always been curious about and would like to know is how many people work in Amherst and would love to live here but don't? I'm not sure how you'd get that information, but that seems like an important thing to know. <clears throat> um, and the other thing, which I don't know if, if it falls into here at all or not, but maybe it doesn't, but at some point it might be also interesting to take some, either this bunch of stuff or some, some set, subset of this bunch of stuff and see what it looks like comparatively to someplace else that there's reason to think it's sort of like Amherst, some other college town or something or other to just know, see something about how we're, how it looks here and how does it look somewhere else? And it might help us know somehow how to navigate the space in between those two things. Yeah, that's a good suggestion. It seems like that's actually one of the strengths that Barrett brings to the table is being very familiar with other, other towns that they've worked with. Um, Alex, I'm curious because you, you're approaching this as a, a researcher right now. So you're seeing data. What what kind of data uh, occurs to you to be something that um, this uh, planning consultant might might try to dig up for Amherst? Oh, goodness. The data points that are coming to mind would also be really difficult to gather, I fear. Um, I think it would be interesting to look at not just the residency tenure, but the length of leases that people are signing and knowing are they multi-year leases, are they one-year leases, are they like 10-month leases that match academic schedules. Um, also looking at people who are living places without a formal lease and, and subletting, um, I think that would be interesting to see as well, just anecdotally. I know that's the situation for some renters in town, um, but I, I'm not sure how you'd go about gathering, the, especially the sublet data. Yeah, Allegra, please. Um, I'd be interested to see about short-term rental, like places that are being used for Airbnb or whatever. That and that, if folks are complying, um, that the 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 town has um those uh, uh that town has information about that, and certainly um they can study the Airbnb listings and the Commonwealth is getting tax payments from everyone who's complying with the law for short-term rentals. So the data is out there for sure. Um, you know, apart from those who are uh, evading all the, the laws. <laughs> they might be able to give us some comparative sort of qualitative information too on on short-term rentals, you know, and, and it, like a question I have is what's a threshold? Like what's, what's the concerning threshold of short-term rentals where it, like, is there a curve, you know, where it gets much more intense and where are we relative to that? They might have insights on that, you know, from around the state. Erica. Um, just under college enrollment, I think it's also important to see if we can get from UMass uh, the trend of students coming back on campus, because actually driving around in an area where it's very high student population, I'm seeing a lot of for rent signs. And in Sunderland, I'm actually seeing huge uh, places with lease signs still up. So I'm wondering if, you know, one, that you, they're talking about that cliff where students are dropping off as it's already starting, and two, if there are more students coming back on campus and not leasing. Well, that, that new giant building opened up, um, it seems. Um, uh, yeah, but I, I, I've noticed those signs too. Carol? Um, I'm not sure this is the right place to say this, but one thing that seems to me a really useful piece of information is the list that Greg started and I worked on a little bit and needs a little bit more work, but it now exists at least in some state. 
And it's like, here's all the places where there's affordable housing. Here's what the SHI says. Here's what the number of units really is. And Greg even has on there kind of a lot of them, a lot of the rental ones broken out by uh, how many bedrooms and stuff like that. So it's just a great piece of information about the affordability that we, the affordable housing that we do have. Less thorough about home ownership than rental, but I would like to see that document shared with us and shared with uh, Barrett and and sort of uh, made a little bit more robust than it is, but it, I find it to be already useful. So maybe this is the wrong place to say that, but I'd like to see it in the mix. So I'll, I'll just share some of the items. I, I went to one of the, in the focus group sessions with Barrett and one item that came up was the need for housing that's appropriate for the adult children who have intellectual disabilities and and need need support because when they turn 21 the state pulls the plug on everything and it's a real challenge and so and in fact in the focus group I was in there were two participants who had children for whom appropriate housing would be a great help um so it, you know that data, I don't know how that data can be accessed, but that would be a valuable piece of information. The other theme was, um, and I think this is a part of what uh, was behind, uh, Erica, your suggestion for single or two person household was uh, seniors living in houses that are maybe, they would like to have a smaller place if there were an option. Um, so. The, getting a sense of the scale of that that population, how much housing would be possible if there were good alternatives for 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 those folks, and I guess related to that, I wonder if even just finding out about the wait list at Applewood um, is a is a relevant data point. Um, uh, Alex, yeah, I guess it's um, tangential to to housing, but it also came up in the focus group session that I went to with Barrett already talking about commute mode and multimodality options um, for housing, looking at how much of our housing is actually accessible to major bus routes um, and bike share now that Valley Bike is back, as opposed to how much of it is exclusively auto dependent. Yeah, Grover, thank you, Alex. Yeah, I also, this might be included in the housing condition, but I would also be like to see how many units are already accessible. You know, there's two, there's like different levels, but how many are accessible where at least one bathroom is on the same floor as one bedroom and how many are ramped and how many are fully ADA compliant? That would be helpful to know. Um, what do you think, Greg? Is this a, a, a list you can get, get into? A... Solid gold. Yeah. This is all, yeah. this is all good know. stuff, a, you know. Wish, wish lists are fun. Um, we came up with a lot yeah. of good stuff. But I guess the uh, the point is, if you think of anything else, maybe you're reading the Gazette tomorrow and it gives you an idea, um, uh, shoot it over to Greg um, when, when if something comes to mind. To, to add. For sure. And um, uh, yeah, and I'm definitely, you know, yeah, always open to sort of random input uh, I'll, I'll always welcome those emails. Um, uh, and, uh, just note that they're going to come, Barrett will develop, a, a, I think a probably like an outline or a very loose draft of a needs assessment. They'll bring it both to staff and then I think to the trust as well. Um, uh, um, so it will probably include some of this and then we can be able to respond to that. So we'll have a few rounds of being able to, to chew on that hopefully. Um, so, yeah. Okay. Great. Um, so Anyone have any last things jump to mind before we move on from this agenda item? Okay. All right. Yeah. Sorry, Greg. I think I cut you off. Um, no, and I was actually going to transition into town updates and maybe okay. just say a bit more about um, just a couple of quick um, updates on what's happening with the housing production plan. So many of you participated in those focus groups. Um, they met with, I think, 39 uh, uh, individual people in, in that format. 
um, they are following that up, um, doing um, some work, um, reaching out to representatives of student government, both graduate and undergraduate, to work with students, um, do some focus, focus groups for them. Hey, buddy. Um, and then um, uh, also working with um, CHD, the, the housing outreach program or the housing um, navigator program CHD has. They're going to meet with some low-income renters um, that CHD has worked with. Uh, um, so they're really kind of going deep on engagement, which I'm really pleased by. Um, and then I'll, the last bit of the housing production plan piece I'll say is there's going to be a community forum um, open to everybody on the 1st of October in the Woodbury room over at the Jones library. Um, join us there. Um, and, so the, and you all have uh, flyers uh, linked in your email for that. Um, and thank you, Carol, for catching a date. There was for a minute out there, a flyer, which said, Wednesday the 25th sorry it said Tuesday the 25th uh the oh this is a different event sorry that's <laughs> right I'm gonna kiss a kid real real quick right here I'll be right okay. back yeah 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 um <laughs> all right okay yep um so October 1st that Tuesday October 1st at what what time did, did, did someone have that in front of them um, let me sorry uh, um so sorry I'm back pardon me yeah. okay um, so yeah, so that, that different event, which I'll, which I'll get to, um, on, so yeah, so the, the housing production plan forums is going to be the 1st of October, um, a week, just about a week previous on Wednesday, the 25th, um, we'll have the report back from the, uh, VFW, uh, redevelopment projects, um, uh, which many of you attended that event in June. Um, um, so the architect's going to have their, their report on what they did, which is very exciting. So I've seen some initial stuff. It looks it's looking good. Um, sorry, it's bedtime here. <laughs> um, Greg, can you can you tell us what time the meeting is on the first again? So, just so the can... first is going to be um, going to be actually two sessions. Um, that's going to be uh, two o'clock till three thirty, and then six o'clock till seven thirty. So people will be able to choose either. Um, and there's an RSVP link on the flyer that got sent out. Um, a couple weeks ago, or sorry, a couple days ago. Um, so, um, um, yeah, so I'm going to mute for a second. Uh, pardon me. I'll be, I'm going to, I'm just okay. going to assist for, for a second here. Um, um, but, um, you want to talk about the block party for a second? Yes. Um, I'll talk about I'll, that I'll be right for, for a right. second. Yeah, sure. All right. Um, so I think you pr you probably all know about the block party. Everyone's been to the yeah. So uh, the the idea was that maybe we could have a a table um, to provide information and just kind of get the word of, about what we're doing uh, in the community. Um, I I'm happy to um, you know s sit there for a period of time, but I wonder if um, uh, I guess number one, what do you think would be valuable opportunities of having a table at the block party and then number two uh would anyone potentially have interest to take a period of time um over the course of that that evening so i guess first question what what could we do with the opportunity to communicate with the uh community community through the block party what what jumps to mind grover well i was wishing that we had our strategic plan fully that it voted and <laughs> ready to print because that would be convenient. Um, uh, just if I may re re reply yeah. on that, I, mean, I think that um, uh, nothing stops us from sharing that, that here's the draft strategic plan as we're, um, you know, it, we're, we're, it's, you know, 90% baked, I would think at this point. Um, yeah. And so, I think that we can talk about it and, and we could kind of turn the timing to our advantage by saying that we can, you know, it's largely finalized, but we can take, you know, reactions and, and feedback mm -hmm. from the community. Yeah, that's a good point. So, yeah, I mean, maybe even just sharing the top line of our like three buckets, even for our strategic priorities. And I mean, I think it would also be good to have pictures of past projects that we supported, for example, just that simple. So people have a tangible sense of what we mean. Excellent. Um, uh, Erica, what do you think? 
Uh, so uh, Shelly is going to raise this, which is there is a question about community input. So that's perfect. Um, I think it would be perfect. Um, the other thing that I think would be important is talking to Valley. Um, they have already put out emails about uh, uh, Amherst community housing, but that would be really important um, to have that information, uh, either flyers about it or, you know, first time homeowner sessions, et cetera. So I think that would be really, really important because that's concrete and people can start, you know, thinking about it and take it, take it with them. Um, and then um, if our website has up-to-date information, if people were looking for information, I think that's important. And possibly the, the Navigator link um, that uh, actually has affordable uh, housing uh, throughout the region, throughout the state, actually. I think that link is really important because uh, it could help people look for affordable places. Okay, so, you know, one, it's not only um, sharing what we're doing, and our past successes, um, but also this can be a, a, a way to make resources available to, to the community that is drawn by the word affordable housing in our, you know, on the table. Uh, Grover, please. Um, I was just gonna appreciate Erica's contributions, plus one to all that. And uh, I forgot to say that I'm happy to take an hour at the table. My kids will be running laps asking for sugar and money around me, but no. Awesome, okay, thank you. Uh, Allegra. Um, this kind of is also maybe a question for Greg, which I seem to have a lot of these days, but I believe that Wayfinders is starting the process with ZBA for the Beltertown Road East Street School project. So perhaps having that information about that and I don't know again if they are in a spot where they are requesting community support if that's something that we could be drumming up then or if that part has already come and gone and they don't need us to do any more advocacy around community support for the project okay speak I'll speak to that um yeah uh, and and pardon my uh, my my brief break there. Um, um, so uh, and and I'll I'll actually start by asking. I just heard Grover. Did anybody else say they wanted to join us on the nineteenth? Carol, Alex, great, okay. awesome. Just on the I'm... scheduling. Um, how about we do a, a maybe just a, a a Google Doc and we can write our names, sure. preferred times, and we'll figure it out. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Great. Awesome. Um, and my and my understanding is uh, the. The vibe is no nobody stays till nine, you know, for this kind of thing, uh, you know, for any informational stuff. Um, so, um, uh, and I'll be sure to bring sugar for Grover's kids. Um, um, to the Wayfinders question, um, yes, yeah, so they are. That's kind of another sort of separate town update. Um, uh, they are before the ZBA. Um, uh, they've had one meeting so far, um, and they got through. Um, uh, a lot more than expected to. Um, um, and it is expected, I think, I, you know, the, the, the pace they're on right now is very positive um, per um, how this has gone in the past and much, much, they're, they're far ahead of where they were, for example, with Amherst community homes, um, you know, after one meeting, um, which is a great sign. Um, uh, so, and, and we can certainly, and I'll, one, I'll see if I can get a visual or something from them for uh, a table um or see what we have you know what we can print um uh certainly anyone's i think welcome to give public comment at the zba um uh thus far um no one's really aware of pushback yet um which is great um but you know but push forward uh, can never hurt um you know so um uh but yeah but i think it's also just a great thing to illustrate like what we do as an entity and you know to talk to be able to talk about that kind of a project and then I'll circle back to Valley. Um, they are they were already on it uh, before Gaston and I schemed this up. Um, so they already have a table booked and are planning to be there. Valley's marketing program for Amherst Community Homes is well underway. Um, I think Erica actually forwarded an email to the trust from Valley, I think highlighting some community, some informational meetings they're having. Um, but so basically that marketing process is live um, and 
you know, anybody who you know who might be interested in purchasing one of those homes or being part of that lottery, um, you, now's the time to connect them right to Valley. Um, so uh, you can look at um, Erica's email, but and, or you can always come to me and I can, you know, I can connect somebody. Um, uh, so, um, but yeah, so did we cover... Um, uh, block party stuff or, or was there outstanding yes. questions? So we, we, um, yeah, um, what we identified was that we can share about our strategy. We can have the, the strategy talk about it. And, you know, Grover suggested the kind of the top lines, maybe in bigger print and the printout for anyone who wants to go deeper. Um, the past projects, pictures, I assume you've got a color printer you can use in town hall. Um, and um, and then it's a great opportunity to tell people about resources they may not know about. Um, uh, so whatever we can think of that is helpful in, in addition to our own website. For sure. And, 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 I'll, and we've and got and I think volunteering. I mean, I think we're yeah. prime time is what should we, is it five to seven or? Five I think to five to seven, seven or five, five to seven thirty, something like yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. Um, Good. And there's going to be kind of a town cluster, I think, of, of okay. tables. So it'll also be a good opportunity to sort of, you know, just get to know other town volunteers and, uh, you know, you know, folks who are in the, you know, the sort of outer periphery of the orbit. Um, so, um, um, yeah, so that's great. So, and, I'll, and I'll send out something about scheduling uh, folks to, you know, when they can join. But, you know, I think that's kind of an informal, you know, thing. Um, so I'll, I'll send that out. Okay. Um, and then um, also in Valley's email, just to, and, and also information we can share at the um, uh, at the event or at the block party. Um, but just for your, your information now, um, there's also a, a lottery happening. I think in November, this was in the email that uh, Erica sent out for Amethyst Brook Apartments, where, which are actually developed in Pelham uh, next door, but um, uh, certainly um, you know proximate and something to share with interested parties. So that's a, a thing to know about. Um, uh, and, uh, and we'll highlight that um, on a flyer at the block party. Um, so we talked about Wayfinders, talked about the VFW um, that's coming up. Um, I think that's what I've got on town updates, okay. unless anybody has questions. Yeah, I see um, hands up. Allegra, do you have a follow-up or is your hand from before? No, okay, uh, Alex. Yeah, um, can we have copies or have a way to direct people to the community activity form if they're interested in being more involved with the trust? Yes, absolutely. Yes, Erica. <laughs> we have one vacancy. We need one more trust member. <laughs> okay. Um, well, cruising right along, policy updates. Um, hopefully we still have Grace. Yes, we do. So yeah, Grace Simmons is here. Um, and Grace, I'm can I I'm gonna go ahead and promote you to a panelist. Uh, so uh, uh, maybe I'll confirm that's okay. Is, is it okay if I put you on screen, Grace? Yeah, definitely. All right. So Grace uh, with from Representative Dome's office is gonna um, talk about a few highlights from the um, recently passed um, housing bond bill. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, th there's a whole bunch of stuff in there, but I, I asked Grace I, to talk about, a, a you know, a, a few specifics that maybe stood out a little more relevant to Amherst or our work on the trust. Um, so um, welcome, Grace. And you wanna... Awesome. Great to be here. Great to see you all. Um, so there was a lot in this piece of legislation. So um, I know that I saw in the packet that you have um, kind of the... Um, the sheet that the administration put out with overview. So I'm not gonna go into all of those details, but kind of stay local here. Um, overall, just starting with uh, some of the highlights that the rep wanted to share and um, the local authorizations, there was $3 million of investments um, authorized for the third Hampshire district, which includes $500,000 for the Amherst Municipal Affording Housing affordable housing trust um, for planning development of affordable housing projects on municipal property. Um, $1 million for the Amherst Housing Authority for property maintenance and ca capital improvements. Um, $1 million for the Amherst Housing Authority to implement clean energy modifications. And then another 500,000 for the Granby Housing Authority. Um, I do have a link 
to Repdom's website. She has a page there that has um, some of her highlights, but um, I can email that over to uh, one of you later on to guest on if that's all right. And um, just a important thing to keep in mind is that these are authorizations. They're not funds that are allocated like in a budget. So this will require continued advocacy for it to be, um, you know, actually put forth by the governor. And um, so if there are any projects that you want these funds for in the next year, um, that would definitely need to have some ad advocacy starting sooner than later so that the funds can get put into the governor's capital improvement plan. Um, the capital improvement plan comes out in January. I'm not sure when in January. I just know January generally. Um, so yeah, those conversations would definitely want to be started sooner than later. And our office is more than happy to partner with you all in terms of that, that advocacy. Um, yeah. And um, yeah, another thing is that, you know, the authorization, it doesn't preclude the trust from pursuing other grants or forms of funding for any of these projects. So definitely keep us in the loop about any other funding pursuits that you have. Um, you know, so uh, we're, you know, up to speed with that and any sort of ad advocacy that you think we might be able to help out with in terms of those funds. Um, yeah. And then the next thing was ADUs. That's a bit, uh, yeah, Allegra. I think Carol actually had a hand up first. Oh, sorry. That's okay. I, I just wondered, like, when we make a proposal to our own Community Preservation Act, we can just say we need the money because, and we don't have to have a specific project. And I guess my question to you is this money that has been appropriate, whatever the right word, authorized for the housing trust, in order to get it released, will we need to have a specific project? Or can we have the same kind of argument that we make with our own CPA? I am not 100% sure. I think that based on the governor's track record of um, how she deals with and plans on dealing with um, authorizations, um, I think it would definitely be a stronger argument to come forward to her for any sort of local project or local funds to have a, a project cemented, um, not cemented, but you know, an actual project that you'd want to plan it on because I think her priorities lie on some of the like greater um, statewide initiatives in terms of that. So I definitely would be more than happy to check with the rep about that. I will actually just drop that down, but, and um, give you a more concrete answer. But yeah, one moment. I think my question kind of piggybacks off of that. So I'm just going to use Wayfinders as an example. I'm not saying we're going to earmark it to them or whatever but say we said okay we would like to use the money that's in that authorization for the wayfinders east street school project but we don't know for whatever when quite yet is there like a use by date on the money there is i did not uh, double check that date but usually the uh the authorizations have a kind of longer set um, used by date in terms of um, not necessarily when you would have to, I'm not sure in terms of if once they actually allocate the funds, what, if there would be a used by date or what that would be. But I know at least the amount of time that the governor has to actually allocate the funds, there is a um, timeline. I just don't know that one off the top of my head, but I can get that answer for you. Thank you. Yeah. Before I move on to ADUs, any other? I know that was like a rapid fire of highlights, but uh, and you know, and, and I think also, and probably, I'll just add, there's also money in there. Similarly, you know, like in the in the bond flow, but not yet. The money doesn't exist yet until it's bonded. But for Amherst Community Homes, for that solar um, earmark, which we heard about a lot uh, a month ago, and then I believe there's also uh, money for, specifically for wave. It, 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 it is earmarked to Wayfinders uh, for their the East Street School in Belchertown Road. Same deal, though. Uh, it has to be allocated, and the governor has to do that. Um, um, so, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and then in terms of any other, um, like, grant programs or initiatives that are in the um, Act or were, that had funding authorized through the Act that um, 
you know, aren't specifically for Amherst, um, you know, if, if grants or any funding opportunities open from those, you're not precluded from trying to pursue those. So definitely, you know, look into those and keep us in the loop about them if you do um, decide to pursue any of them. Um, yeah, and then ADUs, I know that was a big, exciting thing. I've been neck deep in ADU info for the past few weeks, so I'm excited to go through this with you all. Um, so just a quick overview of the provision. Um, it's two sections. Section seven just defines ADU and that goes into effect, it went into effect immediately. And then section eight, it's setting out um, the requirements other than the, the uh, max size of the ADU, that one's in the definition, all the other requirements and types of um, regulations that can be put around ADUs are within section eight. And that goes into effect on February 3rd. So basically until February, um, any zoning zoning ordinances or bylaws that would um, you know, prohibit or restrict an ADU would, um, that might contradict the um, language in the act, those are still in effect. But once February 3rd comes around, um, anything, any sort of ordinance or bylaws that would contradict the statute would no longer be enforceable. They gave this timeline to kind of allow municipalities to time to review their local rules around ADUs and amend them or move them around just to kind of fit in better with the um, state statute. But regardless of that, if a municipality were to say like, oh, we're just gonna leave it as is, and they have a bunch of stuff that does contradict the statute, it would essentially be no longer in effect um, starting on February 3rd. And um, I also have a few different resources um, around the ADUs. The um, UHLC, they just, um, their ADU webpage just went live on Monday or Tuesday, I believe. And um, it's got a, real, a lot of really great resources um, there. So I would definitely recommend checking that out. Um, yeah. And then the next thing I have is just briefly touching on the seasonal communities designations. So anything, any questions or other things about ADUs. Could you just say whatever the name of that website, you were just something or other, a bunch of letters and I didn't know what it was. U -H yeah, EOHLC, so the Executive Office of Housing Liv Livable Communities. Thank you. No problem. And I'll also include um, the uh, the links for those for that, as well as a few other um, resources that I found. They're all all the different resources I found are linked through the EOHLC website, but I'll include those in my email to guests on later on. Yeah. Grover, uh, did you have a question? I do. I have a follow-up question about um, the overlay of the state, when the state law contradicts the local law. So the state law says that it doesn't have to be owner-occupied if it's uh, 0.5 miles away from public transit. So does that mean if we have an owner occupancy rule and somebody who might be me lives 0.9 miles away from the bus stop that the town's owner occupancy rules are still in place? From my understanding of the text, I think that the half mile thing had to do with requiring additional parking spaces. I think that the statute just says that a municipality can't require owner, owner occupancy of either the principal residence or the ADU. But um, if someone lives more than half a mile from public transit, they the municipality is allowed to require up to one additional parking space on I the property. See. Very helpful clarification. Thank you. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then in terms of the seasonal communities designation, um, so RepDOM did submit an amendment and advocate for um, higher education host communities um, to be included in the seasonal communities provision, but that did not pan out. I know that there were some changes to the um, seasonal communities designation text in the um, bill that kind of leaves a little more wiggle room than the original version that we were that the house put out um before all the amendments came through from both the 
representatives as well as the Senate and the um, conference committee. But I would recommend that if you want to look into that or if, you know, that Amherst, if Amherst is um, interested in being designated as a seasonal community to get into contact with someone at um, HLC, the ex executive office of housing livable, livable communities. Um, and because right now they're also, you know, in the process of developing all of their different regulations and guidance around this massive piece of legislation. So I think that they're in the process of figuring all of that out as well. And um, they haven't yet put together, I don't think they've yet put together their um, seasonal communities uh, council. So once they have more regulations out and a lot more of that stuff concrete, then I think we'll have more clear answers to things such as that. Um, yeah, and then the Small Properties Acquisition Fund, I know you were interested in hearing about that a little bit. Um, and so the, the uh, fund was allocated $10 million, not allocated, um, I am now forgetting the word authorized, $10 million in funds. Um, it's a program that was established to provide soft loans for the acquisition of small scale residential mixed use buildings. Um, and the loans are meant to supplement other acquisition soft loans um, that are administrated, administered by municipalities or other lenders. Um, and there's different types of uh, compliance that the acquired properties have to comply with. Um, but yeah, it's um, it's administered by EOHLC as well. Um, so, you know, they, they've, they've gotten a little bump in funding through this. So I would definitely recommend if you're interested in looking into it, um, definitely it doesn't hurt because as we said, um, it, you're not precluded from trying to um, pursue other funds that were alloc that were I keep almost saying allocated, uh, but that were put forth in this uh, in the legislation. So definitely look through and see all the different opportunities that there are because there are a lot of different funding opportunities in the act. Okay, um, uh, just to kind of put a pin on that being a rich subject for you know, one or two people to to take on to try to identify what those are. Um, thank you so much. Of um, course, and always more than happy if you have any questions about anything. Um, I said it a few times, it's a massive piece of legislation. So I'm more than happy to dig into anything else in there um, that you have specific questions about. Any, any other questions uh, before Grace uh, steps away? Um, Thank you so much for, for 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 joining on the invitation. It's really um, you know it's very wonderful that we get the representative support here. Thank awesome, very so happy to be here. Great to see you all, and um, yeah, excited to always see what you all are up to. Thank you, Grace. Until next time, Thanks, let Grace. us know how we can help you as well. All right. Um, well, so um, plan adoption. Um, yeah. What? 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 What did we have in mind with with that point, uh, Greg? Well, um, so I think Shelley uh, is going to materialize oh, in a moment here, uh, <laughs> but I just mis made her a speaker. Um, but yeah, but I think uh, just sort of, you know, we were going to maybe start by just maybe taking the temperature or even confirming folks. Uh, um, comfort with the plan as is overall um, before we move forward into some more granular stuff, but I'll maybe hand it to Shelly. Uh, that's okay. Welcome, Shelly. You're still on mute there. Sorry. Yep. Sorry. So, um, Greg, are you able to pull up version seven for us just to quickly review that? Okay. Yes. So tonight, um, hello everyone, so nice to see you. We're wanting to go through, um, so we did a little bit more modification based on our last conversation for um, seven draft version seven of our um, of goals and strategies. We wanted just to review that to make sure that you're feeling comfortable with it. Um, but we're also wanting to talk about um, a, an outreach strategy, like just to allow some feedback on the, goals and strategies that, that you're looking at before you do a final vote of accepting on it. So tonight, it's really wanting to review it to make sure that you're 
comfortable with presenting this more broadly in the community. And then um, I'd like to chat a little bit about um, what it might look like to solicit some feedback, allow some feedback, um, bef and then, you know, with the possibility that you might want to modify things a little bit based on feedback and then to do a vote in October or November after there's um, a little bit of chance for feedback. So in front of you here is draft seven. So we moved the uh, strategy about inclusionary zoning up to development as we had talked about last week at last time, uh, month or last month. Yep. Oh, the months go so fast. Uh, so that was the change. And then um, we did a little bit of tweaking of the language around CPA, working toward a minimum 15% recommended transfer with the option to request additional funds. So that was a, a slight tweak. And then uh, we modified the language under education, um, facilitate. So we um, there was some conversation around, do we call it a meeting or, or what do we, how do we identify these? And we decided the language of facilitate strategic engagements with municipal boards to keep members abreast of local housing needs and build partnerships between boards. So to keep it a little bit more general about what that actually looks like, whether it's a meeting or, or a different kind of engagement. And then we, I think we cleaned up the language on D to make it a little bit easier to understand, I think, of build build relationships, awareness and participation among targeted constituency groups identified as housing cost burdened in Amherst housing production plan. So those were minor, for the most part, pretty minor changes last time. So um, Unless there are additional modifications or suggestions, then this is what we would then seek to present in some form to allow a bit of public reaction or input. And in, in fact, earlier this evening, Shelley, we were talking about the biggest town event of the year, which is next Thursday and mm -hmm. having a table and the strategy to be able to chat with folks who come by to, to chat with us at, at the Affordable Housing Trust table. Fantastic, that sounds awesome. So should should we, are, are people feeling at this point pretty comfortable with this document where we can move in to talk about what that might look like, what an engagement might look like? Yeah, does anyone see something that, that you wanna point out? I mean, it's, you know, this is a better time in the future if you see something that doesn't quite feel right. Um, I, you know, I'm I, speaking for myself, I uh, appreciate the drafting that you bring back from the conversations we've had, and and I don't have anything uh, subject to what, what the the other members say. And anyone have have a concern or or you see an opportunity for refinement? Okay, well it sounds like we can go to the next part of the conversation. Oh, Carol, was that a hand or no? no? Okay, next part of the conversation, then, Shelley. <laughs> It's a little bit of like the speak now or forever hold your peace kind of thing, but um, all right. No, so, um, I, I, so I just want to offer what the small group talked about our last meeting, and then you can tell me more about your conversation about the event next week and what that might look like. But so part of what we had discussed as a smaller group was wanting to allow for some space before formally um, accepting these to allow conversation more broadly, but not necessarily encouraging like tearing it apart and rewriting it, but but more um, we thought of a, like a couple questions, maybe asking people what strategy really excites you to try to see what really resonates with people. And then another possible question is what might be missing? So so instead of suggesting to rewrite it or to completely rechange it, because you spent a lot of time over several months being pretty thoughtful, but instead trying to gauge kind of how people are receiving it or experiencing it with these kind of questions of what strategy excites you and what might be missing. So I want to put that out there and then let you share with me what you talked about earlier in your meeting and what might make sense. Like, are you imagining at this public event that you would show people this document and ask for feedback or 
Yeah. Uh huh. So can someone share like how you would imagine that or. Yeah, Erica. Um, I think what we talked about, in, um, you know, Allegra, you go ahead if I'm missing something or Grover, um, is to actually, you know, highlight, you know, the, the front part, we can say draft um, and share it with individuals as this is a draft. And uh, it might be, you know, at the end, putting those two questions on there. I don't know if mm. it's too late to get a QR code where they could actually go into the QR code and then put their information mm. in so we can collect the information, but, you know, have some way to get that information back to us. Um, so that was what we sort of discussed. Mm -hmm. I just had a totally different idea. So bear with me, but like, what if we had each section blown up on like a big poster board and then people had stickers and the sticker could be like, mm -hmm. what excites you? And then there could be some way to submit an additional idea. Cause I feel I'm, I mean, I'm thinking about like, Oh, if I was wandering back and forth, you know, a having something like kind of bigger would be helpful, but I also wouldn't want to sit there like reading through pages necessarily. So that hmm. was just what came into my brain. And is this, this is, so this is Thursday. It's next Thursday, one week away. Correct. One week away. Yeah. But I also like the QR code. Um, yeah. I feel like our document is great for us. It's very precise. Mm -hmm. I feel it is entirely too wonky to like mm. put like look at my new baby out to people um <laughs> and ha one have them want to evaluate it or to like do so in a way that that makes sense so I I would I support the QR code I support us having like a couple of copies on the table where we can be like oh you want to read it more in detail but I mm. do think we should have a sort of more simply designed um mm explanation that's like our our top three priorities as part of our strategic you know our draft strategic plan are the and then the top line support the creation of 200 homes secure 4 million and mm. educate the community with at least three outreach things a year you know like just like that summary in really mm. big sort of colorful text um, maybe on a post, I don't, maybe on a poster. Um, and then people could ask us more detail. Like, what do you mean? Like, oh, uh, well, we mean we we have a goal of twenty home ownership homes and one hundred and fifty rental. You know, like we could go into more details as we're chatting. Hmm. That's what I would imagine, just from the comms vision angle of like when you put a lot of housing text in front of people, most people get overwhelmed and hmm. either walk away or get really like fixated on a certain number. So do an abbreviated version of this. Yeah. Very abbreviated. Mm -hmm. That, that, um, that, that resonates with me. I, I agree that it's really almost the first, it's the number one, it's the development. That's like the headline that, that would be, would bring someone in. So I think that, that merits the, the poster board. Um, and I, I agree that the third one, if we were going to have it, then you leave out the detailed stuff about a minimum of whatever, but it's the educate, um, as, as I agree with, with, with Grover's take. Mm. The, the other, uh, the, the rest of the vision, uh, Shelly, to fill you in on, on what we were thinking is not only to have this um, conversation about strategy, but number two, have pictures of, of the developments that we've mm -hmm. participated mm -hmm. in. So there's visual evidence of what the trust has done and does. And yeah. number three, also have um, whatever resources we can have accessible to folks that are useful relating to affordable housing. So that's, that's great. That was the vision for the table as a whole. And we're going to be seated nearby other town um, committees and so on. So it's also a chance for actually to begin to do um, item uh, 3D. Yeah. Or, sorry, three, uh, not 3D, 3A. So this is for sure. You've decided you, you, you are doing this. 
uh, yes, we 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 decided earlier today we're going to do this. Fantastic. So, does this to you? Does this feel like it'll be a sufficient effort to then vote on these, or do you feel like there needs to be a follow up or a, a second um, engagement, or does this feel like it could be sufficient? Do you need to wait until you see what the feedback is? Seems or like we got to see the proof in the pudding. Um, uh, but what what are some other uh, approaches that towns have taken that you would put for us to consider? Oh, this is kind of new. Uh, this is newer for us of really encouraging communities to be doing this kind of a process. Right. So we don't have a lot of, um, you know, yeah. I don't have examples really. Alex, what are you thinking? Yeah, um, I guess a question for for you Gaston and you Shelley is um where are we looking at the public being in this process like on a spectrum of engagement are we purely looking for consultation or are we hoping this will turn into something a little more collaborative the smaller group I'll just say that the smaller group was thinking to have some engagement and reaction and then to be open to possibly modifying some of them but um, because your process has been really thoughtful to not completely reopen it and hash rehash it. Um, you're not a brand new trust. You've been around. So it's not quite the same. I think with a brand new trust, I might suggest a little bit different kind of process at the same time. Um, and your, I think the history of your group has that you want to be in communication with the community. So we wanted some we're proposing that there be some, but not necessarily rehashing it or rewriting it. Does, does that answer your question a little bit? Yeah, yeah, it does, thank you. I mean, you might have a different opinion and we can talk about that tonight, but that was the smaller group kind of felt like um, not rewriting it, but wanting some feedback. Yeah, that's right. I'm just wondering if maybe another potential source of engagement would be to send the draft out to like our list serve of people that we have to say you know as people who have an interest in this already this is kind of where we are um which i guess is kind of a niche market but then it's also possibly people who would take the time to read through some dense housing material hmm. to give some feedback um so that might be another source to consider and just pose those two simple questions um if that's or do you do like a teaser before next week and say, come visit us and mm -hmm. share your feedback or something. Come mm -hmm. visit our table and share your feedback. I like that. Carol, can you uh, remind us how many people are on the mailing list that you've put together over the years? Uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of 100. I don't know exactly. Okay. I could go but, look. But yeah, like it's the it's the niche group. So that that that's a strong list. Go ahead. Sorry. You, you 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 had something else uh carol yeah i i wanted to say that i um it's always happens for me in asking for feedback it does feel really important to me that we have a couple of questions because i don't want to ask for feedback in a way that makes people expect that mm. they can rewrite this yeah I really want to make it clear that somehow that this is this is mostly done. What's exciting? What might be missing? But don't don't get into the weeds with this because I just I, I feel like sometimes soliciting input mm -hmm. ends up making people mad because they tell mm -hmm. you a bunch of stuff and you didn't listen anyway. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to find a way to walk somewhere right. between these two things. Mm -hmm. So we, we want the legitimacy of engagement, but not too many cooks in the kitchen. <laughs> Alex. Yeah, so I wonder if there's one or two specific sub goals here that we could ask people about where we maybe are more open to that being a collaborative process. Like the one that's jumping out to me is the, the 3B where we're talking about our annual community meeting mm -hmm. and asking people what they want to know and what they would like to see from that. Like if we're already interfacing with them, that could also be a good teaser of, hey, we're gonna have a meeting this year, um, but take that moment to listen and then we can in that way be asking something that we're actually being really responsive on. 
And if we're routinely hearing that people want, like, feel like they don't know about certain resources in town, then that's something we can highlight in the meeting, was, was my thought based on what Carol was saying. Mm. Yeah, Grover, yeah, that's a very nice, nice point, yeah. Yeah, I think that's a good idea and even expanding from that. So I agree with Carol, having specific questions will be really helpful to guide the kind of feedback and not to say like, give us feedback, um, not yeah. make somebody think they're line editing it yeah, um, yeah. on the street while people run around them screaming. Um, but also um, building from what Alex said, I also think that this is a great opportunity to understand more what people actually want to hear from us because we have these mm -hmm. education goals and there's a hundred different ways we could go about it. So asking them like, what is it you would like to understand more about affordable housing in our town? You know, mm -hmm. and then it could go, I can imagine what people are going to say because I watch surveys about affordable housing all day, but um, I'm curious, <laughs> like, like are there things um and maybe using different words so like the cost affordable housing the cost of housing what it's like to rent here what it's you know how difficult it is to buy a home like there's different ways we could phrase it but something that gets people maybe maybe this is where the sticker exercise could come in with a poster is like what would you like to know more about housing in Amherst mm -hmm. and then you could have different like quadrants. Like I want to know like why it's so difficult to buy a home or I want to know what options are available for people who are having a hard time. Like those kinds of options. Hmm. I, I mean, I, I really like where, uh, yeah, where you're taking this conversation because indeed it's the, in, it's how we engage that we need to hear from the people we want to engage with. And, and so um, I, I also feel like tinkering with that one or two letters of that goal is, is not a, it's not a big deal. If we're getting concrete, you know, if the, the if our stakeholders are asking for it, um, then that gives us a lot more clarity than I think we even had putting it together. Carol. Yeah, I just wanted to say one other thing, which is that I really like Allegra's and now Grover's idea of doing something with stickers. Having something interactive is a mm -hmm. lot better at any table mm -hmm. anywhere than just sort of here, look at this piece of paper. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Greg. Yeah, for sure, interactive. And I um, <laughs> I think uh, right as bedtime was happening here uh, in my house, um, uh, I stepped away and we were talking about, we started talking about this. I don't actually know if we, did we talk about the housing production plan in relation to this black party? So no, but that was going through my mind too, that, yeah, go ahead. So, and, and, and to the interactive piece. And, and, and in truth, I actually think these things could sync and complement each other and we don't need to think of them separately in practice, you know, while we're at a table. Um, but, but they are up to help us develop some sort of engagement tool in a box, you know, probably in an email that I would then, you know, manifest physically in Amherst, um, uh, which would be interactive and in and, and a way for people to weigh in. So what I am wondering, and, and I also just want to, you know, affirm Alex's and, and, and Grover's points on like, inviting and, and, and per Carol's I you know Carol sort of guardrails there like inviting responses to these strategies and goals as opposed to inviting like edits to them you know mm -hmm. I think the responses mm -hmm. in a way are actually more productive um so we could have the goals you know big on goals little on strategies in the graphic sense and you know and as a conversation piece like informally at the table like oh do you want to weigh in this more formally or, or write something more thoughtful here scan this and you can send you can fill out the survey mm. and respond to these in more depth when you're home you know not out you know handing out candy um and then something interactive as well stickers or dot voting whatever bear could probably help with that um so we could both sort of direct people to offer responses to the draft action plan and also interact in some way on some uh more 
immediate housing theme uh, as well. Um, mm. So I, I think there's definitely a space for that. So just in the, in the, um, to respect your time, um, is there one or two people who want to take the lead on kind of putting this together for next week or how, how do you want to move forward with this given that you only have a week? Yeah. Um, I'm trying to find, think of what, what are the limitations imposed by the open meeting law on a couple of folks meeting to organize for, for this. Is there, do, do we need, is that a problem? What do you think, Greg, issue spotting here? I don't think it's a problem for a couple people okay. Um, okay. to, um, to run with a decision that we make together here. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. um, you know, and so I think what that would look like is, and I could assist in that I'm not a member. Yeah. Um, uh, I think that would look like, um, sketching out some sort of survey tool, not to be used on, I'm proposing here not to be used on yeah. site, but to be yeah. linked to on site, um, and, yeah. and perhaps in Carol's email. Um, and then, um, perhaps, you know, maybe communicating with bear a little bit on, what they could do um and then maybe probably the work of kind of translating our our sort of wonky document into something more um appropriate for a conversation piece at an outdoor event like this do you feel greg that if 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 the rest of us created a script so to speak that you would be in a position to print things up and do that, that end of the process? Um, yes, I can, um, I, I can certainly print stuff. What I'm not honestly sure of is, um, like I can print flyers for sure. Um, I don't know that I'm able to, um, if I'd be able to produce like stand up placards or anything like that, or like big, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm not sure at this point if what, what we're able to do in house versus, um, uh, you know, what we'd have to, well, we got, there's old school yeah. markers and posters. Oh yeah, for sure. We can do that. Uh, yeah, yeah. But I mean, I think like, 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 you know, like, you know, the, like the cardboard stands or whatever that, that mm -hmm. might be beyond our production capability okay. in a week. Uh, Alex. Um, I was going to say, I'm happy to help with large format, like larger scale printing and mounting of things. As long as oh, I wow. have a couple of days, um, I have resources through the gallery and, and through school that I can utilize to print. It won't be super high res resolution. It will be like architecture plotting, um, but I'm happy to help with that and mounting if needed. And okay, and, and mounting. So you've you've got stuff to, like you've got access to. That's the very generous software. stuff. Yeah, it won't be anything super fancy, but if you're wanting like poster paper printed and mounted on foam core, I'm I'm happy to do that. Okay, nice. I mean, I actually think that that's actually a great solution because I think like Barrett could probably like design something for us, you know, um, uh, some sort of ba some, uh, a fairly basic interactive. Um, but, um, uh, but the challenge would be, you know, ma making it pretty. And it seems like that might be a solution. Um, I don't think we need super high res. Yeah. Grover. Um, I don't think I have time to do a, a meeting between now and then, but I am happy to take our top lines of our, strategic goals and put them into a visually pleasing paper for the table and send it to you, Greg, if that's helpful. Okay. That'd be great. Awesome. Um, well, uh, I guess I, I'm, I'm, I, I have time on Tuesday that I can uh, devote to this and, and work with you, Greg. What I'm thinking is um, if uh Let's get the Google Doc for the scheduling to figure out which shifts people want to take. And we can use that very document to be the menu of what we're going to be doing. And people mm -hmm. can chime in and add comments to that document so we can interact a little asynchronously um, uh, to to get our ducks in a row. And does um, is a Wednesday morning adequate for you, Alex? Yeah. Yeah, that should be fine. It'd be helpful if you could let me know the size that I need to print before then um, so that I can get the backing material ready. But yeah. Like this big? <laughs> 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 uh, 
Um, I mean, we're talking about just a regular kind of folding table, Greg, that that's what we're going to be occupying. Uh, yeah, I, I presume like a six or an eight foot folding table, something like that. Okay. Um, so, so it's either the, the vertical style poster board or hor horizontal, but like, is that, is that, what is that? Two by three? Is that the kind of standard size? I think so. Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll reach out. I'll I'll, okay. I'll see what if Barrett has anything in the can already, and then all right, follow up with that with Alex. Okay. Does that give you uh, sufficient comfort, Shelly? I just was wanting to help. <laughs> no, I help know. you kind of facilitate, kind of wrapping up the details because you only have one week. So I mean, way to rally. You, okay. You, I think it sounds fantastic and, okay. you know, way to jump on a, on an opportunity that's coming up. It simplifies, I think a lot of things. So, so right. why don't you do this, see how it works, see what kind of feedback you get. And then you can, we can make, you can make the decision about whether you think that feels sufficient kind of feedback and maybe consider sending the draft document out to your hundred people or whatever. And with a few questions and, and inviting that in that format too. And then, um, so this is your September meeting, and then we can maybe, um, you can tell me, you know, you can decide whether you'll be ready by the October meeting to then vote or think about changes and vote or whether October we look at the feedback and then November vote, like, you know, what, whatever, but we'll, let, let's try and um, let's have a goal of trying to have a vote on this by November, at least. Excellent. Okay. And then the last thing we wanted to just do that chat about a little bit is um, do each of you have the version seven in front of you or should we bring it up again? Because we're wanting to just start a conversation about what goal or strategy are you feeling excited about? And we're asking this because the small group is meeting again next week and we're starting to think about an implementation, kind of what we what kind of we want to propose for an, impl an implementation strategy moving forward. And it'd be helpful for us to hear of you as trustees, what what part of these goals and strategies are you really kind of being drawn to or feel excited about? And just raise your hand, however you want to offer that. Yeah, Legger, what are you thinking? Um, so I mean, I think I I know I know I am a member of another board in town, and um, it's the Community Safety and Social Justice Committee, which sure. previously had um, held along with the at the Housing Trust and the Human Rights Commission and the Board of Health a meeting about affordable housing. So I do think, in terms of the education and public engagement, it seems like I'd be in a natural place to at least bridge with one other committee. And I know one of our committee members and that committee is also on the zoning board. So I do think there are networks that could form. Um, so that would be something that I would be willing to focus some attention on. Is there a particular strategy or just kind of the goal in general that you feel could be a fit for you? Um, certainly, I would say facilitating strategic engagements with municipal boards. Um, and I think, I think hosting an annual community meeting to engage residents in the work of the trust could, you know, that could be a way to widen the net of people who are hearing about the work of the trust and people who are perhaps coming to the meetings, so. Great. Anyone else? Yep. Yeah, Grover. Yeah, I'll just say that I'm most excited about the development portion of this and particularly interested in the land parts of it. So the parcel identification with the town, land donation from an educational institution. I, I would very much like to nerd out a strategy about that. Mm -hmm. um, and also, um, and also the, non, like really all of it, the non-conforming lots, mm -hmm. that's interesting. And I'm curious about the people who were excited about other pieces of the 
strengthen the development ecosystem. I, I also would be in to be in on those conversations. Yep. Awesome. Erica? Yeah, this is, it's really tough because, um, you know, I'm also very interested in the development piece. Um, that was one of the things that drew me to the trust is to really get um, affordable housing online as fast as we can because there's such a wide need. Um, but, uh, you know, depending on, I mean, I think it'd be really important for maybe some of us to take on some of the goals and possibly work on them. And that way we can move them forward a little faster. Yeah. So um, I'm already hearing Grover development and I'm hearing Allegra education. So funding is left. Um, and I think funding is also very important. So if we were heading in that direction, I would definitely, if no one took on funding, I definitely um, would be willing to take on funding um, to try to spearhead um especially, you know, seeking a yearly CPA contribution, but then also researching some creative ways of getting more funding. So funding um, would possibly rise to the top, but I'm interested in all three. I'm excited about all three. Sorry. I really think that we have good goals, um, but I definitely would uh, spearhead funding if no one else was interested. Awesome. Alex, what are you thinking? Um, I'm certainly happy and excited to assist with any of them, but the ones that really jump out to me are also the development goals, um, specifically the last half. So what is that D through F um, that I think are intriguing. As <laughs> we mentioned earlier, I'm, I'm going through the process of doing some housing research right now. So I'd be mm -hmm. excited to, to do more of that. Fantastic. Great. Yeah, Carol, what you, what, what, what's what's jumping out at you? Well, I also kind of am most intrigued by the development stuff. And the two that jump out to me the most are the find two parcels in town. And I don't even know how to do this or what it means, but explore ways to strengthen development, new innovative programs. I don't know what the hell there are, but there has to be some. It cannot be this hard and stupid yeah. to do all this stuff. Yeah. So yeah. I feel intrigued by that, even though I have no idea how to do it. Uh, okay, so I think I, I'm uh, the only one who hasn't spoken yet. I'm also um, very motivated by the these development goals, the one you just mentioned, Carol, and um, the others that are kind of involve a research dimension. I've been talking a lot with Greg about ADUs. I, I, I feel like there's mm -hmm. this possibility of trying to unlock um, the housing that is held by folks who don't need all the room they have, but don't mm -hmm. want to leave town to somehow open that up. Um, and so I'm, I'm, I'm excited about putting imagination to that. Um, just kind of stepping back from, from my, my own views. I mean, my experience on the license commission has been that where we've taken meaningful steps forward, it's because two people take on a very concrete project and are reporting back to the group. Mm -hmm. And so, I think that trying to formulate very concrete projects that one or two people are kind of taking the lead on and then reporting back is how we're going to be able to get a lot done as a as a group. Um, so anyway, so I love that we're having this conversation. Fantastic. So the last thing that we're wanting to propose and get your feedback on is um, as we're we're thinking that we might propose a model where there's a few subcommittees focusing on different things. And we wanted to ask you if you would be open to the trust board opening up um, participation from people who are not trust board members. So um, allowing others in the community that might be excited by some of this work that they don't want to sit on the board or they don't need to sit on the board, but they could engage with a strategy or two or a goal. How are you feeling about that possibility? I guess I'll I'll just kind of respond from my own my own personal view is that I if if someone is making commitments um uh, to contribute and that's the form that they want to contribute through and a member of the board is the kind of liaison and shepherd then I mean time and energy and thoughtfulness is is hard to is hard to pull together um, so if it's a member who's uh, kind of leading and and reporting back then I am personally quite open to the idea that we're these mini task forces are getting supplemental energy if, if we can 
harness additional imagination and energy, then we're very fortunate in my view. Eric, is that a uh, yeah, new, new, yeah? Yes, uh, I absolutely agree with you, Gaston. And I also think it would be a wonderful pipeline to get uh, members because uh, if there are uh, people in the community who right now don't wanna fully commit, but then they're engaged in some of this work, they might think, oh, wow, I might as well be a member uh, and have some voting um, you know, responsibilities as well. So absolutely, I think uh, it's a great way to engage community members who are interested in providing support or interested and excited by some of these. Yeah, go ahead. I would say generally it sounds like a good idea, but I'm curious, you know, we when we join, we all take an oath and there's like very, you know, Robert's rules that we're we're working with. So just curious if there's a way to like one extra step or something, if somebody's going to join a subcommittee about rules of, you know, expectations of conduct or something like mm. that, just so that our meetings remain productive. Mm. Um, yeah, that would just be my curiosity or request. Good. I mean, and, and just to share where I was coming from, I wasn't imagining that um, these uh, auxiliaries would necessarily ha even be coming to the meetings um, because it would be a member that knows 100% of what's going on and could mm. be accountable for reporting. That That's how I was processing it. Um, uh, Allegra. I don't know if this is exactly the same thing, but we, when we were talking about kind of before the VFW was located as a site, there was like a working group that had formed and there was a staff liaison and a member of, I was the member of the trust on it. And it was a few other community members like um, the Craig stores director and somebody from Elliot. So, I, and I, you know, we were kind of like a working an ad hoc working group so I don't know mm. if that would be a way mm. to make you know formalize the participation of members of the community without like jeopardizing open meeting law or you know I don't because those were I mean we had meetings that weren't you know they were not public meetings like this because it wasn't like a quorum of members or whatever mm. Um, all of that is to say that, that it's really complicated and messy and I don't care so much about that part because I do think if we can engage community members and they want to be working, mm -hmm. um, towards a specific goal versus necessarily being a member of the trust, I don't see that as a bad thing, but I do also appreciate that there are rules and people like to follow rules and we want to make sure that we're following the rules. Um, so. That's so it. I think one one thing just to re reiterate, if we create a structure, we'd need to um, outline some of this is that you are the decision makers for the trust. So the decisions won't be made by in these task force by non trustees, it would be that the task force would be, for example, with one E exploring ways to strengthen development ecosystem, the task force would do some research and put together kind of a proposal that would be brought back to the trust and the trustees would vote. So we would outline some of those kinds of things because they aren't trustees. So you you make the decisions. So we really just wanted to get your feedback of your sense of, are you open to us putting together a proposal to you about how we might structure this just to allow people who are not trustees to participate on these smaller kind of task force. And it sounds like that you'd be open to considering a way to do that. That's not right. Yeah. So I'm, I'm totally open and I'll believe it when I see it. So this, I mean, it's not, it's not a guarantee that people will, but it's just that it, you're creating a space where they, they could, where it's less of a commitment than actually being on the trust. Um, so the small group is meeting next week and we'll start flushing this out, but I see a couple other people have hands up. Yeah, Greg. Yeah. I was going to say in, um, and this is, um, maybe not surprisingly, you know, some of my thinking behind this, this idea and one of the things uh, I'm interested in doing is if we have a survey tool 
to be able to say like, you know, which of these, you know, are you most excited about or would you, are you most excited about for Amherst? And, you know, would you like to help? If so, put your email here, you know, um, and just sort of demonstrate that we're open to people, you know, joining, you know, and we caveat it and appropriately, you know, uh, not, not make promises um, that we shouldn't. I'll say that um, that's the organizer in me thinking the relatively new municip municipal employee in me is thinking I should probably just run this by trust member and town manager, <laughs> uh, Paul Bachelman, um, uh, before we told, you know, uh, mm -hmm. so maybe I'll do that if, uh, you know, before we really run with this idea, but, um, uh, yeah, I guess maybe I'll ask if that's okay if I do that first or. So I will just throw out that, um, Weston, the community of Weston, their trust ended up absorbing their affordable housing, I think it was a partnership years ago. And they created a model where they had some subcommittees that um, those that had been on the partnership could participate in, but were not trust members. So it's not completely, there is a community that has done something similar, um, but acknowledging that the trust is the decision makers, but allowing others to be engaged in some topics. So just, I'm just going to throw that out there as a FYI. For sure. Um, that, that's helpful. Thank you, Shelley. But I think having a conversation with Paul makes a lot of sense. Uh, never mind. Okay, okay so, I, so you'll have that conversation and, and follow up with Shelly, Greg? Great. great. You can we'll just do, bring we'll it do. to try to have it before our meeting next Thursday and bring yes, that feedback. Yeah. And, I, I, and I expect he'd be supportive of it, um, but but I, you know, just, I was, he's normally here, so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so great. So you have kind of your work cut out for you for next week. And then our, oh wait, how are we going to, are we still going to be able to have our meeting on Thursday if you have this event? Is it an evening event? Evening event. Oh, okay. Okay, good. So we can still meet in the morning, hopefully, although you might be really busy, but you can let me know. Great. So I think we've made some good decisions here tonight and I'm excited to hear about the feedback that you get. And thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Shelly, for guiding us through. Yeah. So are you, do you still have other agenda items or are you wrapping up? We're almost there. Okay. So I'm just going to say goodnight then. Yeah. 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 Good night. Definitely. I was going to stick yeah. around if you were wrapping up, but. No. Uh, yeah. We're, we'll tie off a loose end or two. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Good night. Good night, Shelly. Um, I mean, I, maybe that is everything. Um, is there anything not anything that's come up in the last two days of note for our group that is not more than a couple minutes? Greg? Um, yeah, I'll just sh share that I I uh, I did join um, uh, a really interesting call uh, led by Judy Barrett actually separately from her work with us, but um, on ADUs um, uh, there's a great deal of interest um, in um, among the the planner community. Um, in how, how this gets implemented um, and some interesting, um, probably actually more interesting questions to resolve than I, than I thought there would be when it got passed as far as um, some of the wonkiness. I think probably more so in other communities than Amherst, but, um, uh, but you know, even we might have, might be interesting to see how non-conforming lots um, work with this legislation um, and, and that might be resolved by courts possibly um so but but it's early still um so but yeah interesting a lot, a lot of dialogue yeah, out just there, to though, pick up on that we um talking with greg and nate and preparing for this meeting nate shared that the definition of adu in amherst does not track the definition of adu in the state law so there's kind of amherst adus that don't fit and so it, there's some interesting wrinkles to get sorted out in the next few months um, Erica. Sure. Uh, first, I just want to thank you, uh, Gaston and Greg, for putting that wonderful letter in the Amherst Bulletin to the to thank the Interfaith um, Affordable Housing Group um, in terms of their funding to us. So I just want to thank the two of you publicly that um, you put that together and did that for us. Um, it was a really nice letter. Um, second, I just wanted to see, um, oh, oh, I think I lost my train of thought. It was something that, oh. Uh, Oh, I know. Okay, I'm sorry. We had way back when put together questions 
for Dave and for Paul in meeting with UMass, and we've never heard anything about that. If we could somehow just get a follow-up in terms of what's happened with that, because UMass is still one of the biggest elephants in the room. So um, if we could put that on the agenda sometime in the future, that would be great. Um, thanks. Any, anyone have any anything else uh, of note? Um, okay, well, no one here for public comment. Um, next meeting, October 10th. Just to recap very briefly the plan, the game plan for this coming Thursday. Um, Grover, I hear you volunteered to create a sign with the top line. Awesome. Uh, Greg, we can work on getting, you're gonna reach out to Barrett to get what Alex may, may print. Um, you and I, let's meet and think how we can populate resources for the table and anything else that we'll try to create a, a checklist. Um, but I think that with uh, your contribution, Grover, and your contribution, Alex, and then the Google Doc for signups, and then you and I to kind of spot loose ends, I think we've got a game plan. Oh, you, we're not here, you're, you're muted, Greg. And so we want, and, and, and I can do this, but we want to do like a uh, some sort of feedback tool separate from whatever we do at the table. We want something that we can say, hey, if you want to share more, you know, click this when you get home and, and you can, and, that, and that's something Carol could also send out via the email list. Yes. So right. thank you for bringing up uh, Carol's email list. Uh, do folks think it's important to send out an email ahead of Thursday or to have our thing next Thursday and then send something out. Wait until after Thursday. I don't think personally that it's urgent that it happened before Thursday. Okay. okay. And anyone feel like it's urgent to get that out? Might be cool to be, I, I like the idea of being able to say, come see us at the table on Thursday. Okay. I well, do you do as well, Allegra? Is that what you yes. Said? Yes. Okay. So then if we're sending it out, it's just saying, come to our table on Thursday, 5 to 7 p.m. Um, uh, we And then the, the, the three questions, as I heard them, let's just see if we got them right. What excites you? What do you think is missing? And um, how would you like us to engage with you about what we're doing? Does, does that... Yeah. How engage with you or what so, do you uh, want to know uh, from us uh, or something? Uh, Carol, how about you, Greg, and I can have um, an email thread to just nail that down. Okay. Does that work? Okay. I got something. Yep. Yep. I think, we got, I think we got a plan. Um, and let's use that Google Doc to send e write each other notes if we want and have ideas or suggestions about how to do that. If you can't tell, <laughs> I'm I'm very comfortable with last minute stuff um yeah go ahead carol i just wanted to so greg when you make your thing to send out and say if you want to give us more feedback you can do it this way it's still going to be connected to the three questions it's not going to be just some generic sure. feedback thing right so yeah so so my thought is that we won't be connect. we won't be gathering like like quantitative like you know we're not like filling out forms at the table on in a detailed way on, on the next Thursday, more just sort of dialogue and conversation. And we can kind of like see what people's responses are in, in an interactive sense, but capturing, but, but those four questions, I think those would be more like more of a survey tool, like in an email that clicks through to something. Yeah. I just, it's just, just as long as it's still like it's not, not asking not asking for somebody to edit our, you know, just Correct. so we're being, finding that balance place. Correct. And I thought there yep. were only three questions and you said four. So now I'm confused. Yeah, me there's, too. There's two variants of, of the last one. <laughs> we, okay. we can work well, with that. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll, 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 we'll sort that out. Um, today's Thursday. So um, uh, um, why don't we try to get, um, and the email thread that we're just talking about up to going tomorrow and, and the Google doc either tomorrow or Monday. Great. That work? 
Okay. Yep. Um, got a, a motion to adjourn. I guess we're a little less formal here. We're all ready to adjourn. Anyone have any last words? All right. Well, thanks everybody. Great uh, to see you. I think we got a lot done. And so uh, appreciate that. See you thanks, next everybody. On Thursday in person, which will be great. Thanks everyone. Good work. Okay. Good night. Good night.